Hello stars, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to build a signal generator. I bought a bunch of components for this project, but due to some unexpected issue, I couldn't make much progress before. The main part of this build is the AD9830 module, which connects to a microcontroller and can generate signals from 1 Hz up to 12 MHz. It might sound like an easy project to make, but is it really that simple? Stick around till the end of the video to find out. The AD9830 module connects to an Arduino Nano through the SPI interface, just like you can see in this diagram. I've connected the signal output to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. And by using the serial monitor in the Arduino ID, I was able to visualize the output waveform. This module can generate sine, triangle, and a square waveform. Very cool, right? But there are a few issues. The amplitude of the sine and triangle waves are quite low, around 600 millivolts peak to peak. And there is another problem. The output signal is mixed with the bit of DC offset. So we need to amplify the signal. The best option here is to use operational amplifiers or op amps, since we can adjust their gain. But are classic op amps like the UA741, the one you properly learn about at university, really suitable for this job? Well, they work, but at the higher frequencies, the signal amplitude starts to drop. That means the simple op amps like the UA741 have a limited bandwidth. After doing some research, I found that the LM830 has a much better bandwidth about 15 MHz. I wanted to amplify the signal using a single power adapter. But the output waveform wasn't quite what I expected. Eventually, I used two adapters to create a dual power supply. And that finally gave me a clean, amplified signal I was looking for. So at this point, I realized that my basic design actually works. So I grabbed a piece of paper and wrote down everything I wanted this project to do. One knob to control the output amplitude, another for the DC offset, one for the frequency, and a 7 second display to show the frequency. Plus a few other ideas that I can't quite remember right now. I started designing the PCB while also working on the code. I won't go into the program part because honestly it's probably the most boring part to watch. While waiting for the PCB to be fabricated, I simulate the circuit and everything worked perfectly. Then came the fun part, assembling all the components. To create a dual power supply on the PCB, I used a transformer. And as you can see, the program seems to be working great. I connected an LED to the output so we can see the changes in frequency and amplitude. Yeah, the circuit works. But just to be sure, I'll have to borrow my friend's oscilloscope again. Wait a second. I think I forgot something. This is the circuit I used to amplify the signal. It's a non-inverting operational amplifier. And to calculate the gain, we divide the upper resistor by the lower one. Then add one. I used a 100 kilo potentiometer as an upper resistor and a 10 kilo resistor as the lower one. So the gain of the circuit can vary between 1 and 11. But here's the question. Will the gain still be 11 at higher frequencies? If we divide the bandwidth specified in the data sheet by the gain, we get the actual bandwidth of the amplifier. That gives us around 1 MHz, not the 12 MHz that we need. 
So this IC isn't really suitable for our circuit. I found another IC with a bandwidth of about 300 MHz. Which means that for our target gain of 11, we will have an effective bandwidth of around 27 MHz. Much better. However, this new IC is single channel, which doesn't fit our current PCB design. So I need to update the PCB file and order a new one. That's it for today's update. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like the video and stay tuned for the next part.